Hello. I got a, uh, a request from a subscriber to go into some detail on how I compute um, implied volatility in my Black-Scholes model. Uh, textbook Black-Scholes assumes that uh, IV doesn't change as the stock price changes, but that's not true in practice. Um, so how do we simulate real changes in IV as a function of uh, stock price S? Um, Derman's sticky delta model is one way, and I'll go over how I implement that sticky delta model in this video. If you Google Derman sticky delta, um, you'll quickly find some literature from 20 years ago. Uh, I, get in, I get in over my head when I try to explain this stuff, uh, so it's probably better if you just read the papers. He also has what he calls sticky strike and sticky tree models, which supposedly uh, apply in different market conditions. However, um, people seem to kind of prefer the sticky delta model, so I'm going to focus on that for the time being. So here's the basic Derman sticky delta equation. He assumes that uh, IV is a linear equation and that it, that it depends on um, uh, stock price S and time T. So basically it's at the money IV plus a slope M underscore IV times um, strike K minus the stock price S. So everything except K uh, depends on time. Uh, in this case, time is actually days to expiration. So how do we estimate, we'll, we'll just go through one by one and how do we estimate each of these terms because it's not obvious how to do that. So what is MIV? So in this case, I literally cut and pasted four options change for, for the SPY from uh, barchart.com and you can use whatever Yahoo Finance, wherever you want to use, um, into my Google spreadsheet. Then I plot IV as a function of strike price. So for strike price is reasonably close to the stock price, the IV as a function of strike is roughly linear. Uh, you can see that that sort of breaks down for the uh, five days to expiration option, but um, you know, for, for a rough approximation, at least it, on this stock, it works. Um, the slope of that line is MIV. However, you can see that the slope of the line uh, changes with time. So therefore, MIV is, is a function of time. It's not a constant, um, so it's a little bit complicated. So here I tabulate, I, I do a, a best fit line in, in Google Sheets for these four options, and I tabulate the slope and intercept of those best fit lines here. I also keep track of at the money IV for each of these options. Um, which we're going to need later. So now let's plot the slope and intercept of these best fit lines versus time. And we've done that here. Um, if you look at the points, um, maybe they're linear. I find that they're usually, uh, there's a bit of a logarithmic trend. They tend to get uh, uh, blow up a little bit as you go to toward uh, expiration. Um, so I, instead of a linear trend, I, I assume a logarithmic trend. So all we really care about here is, is the slope, actually. So you can ignore the, uh, the intercept or the, the red line. Um, so in this case, um, I'm assuming that MIV equals A plus B times the natural log of time. So in this specific case, uh, this, for this, this day and these options and this stock, stock um, A equals minus 4.74 times 10 to the minus third, whereas B equals 6.04 times 10 to the minus fourth. But that changes every day, it changes. Okay, so now let's go back to the sticky delta equation. I just said that MIV is equal to A plus B times log of T. So if I substitute the second equation into the first, um, I get this equation. Um, now, there's another term that we haven't defined yet, and that's, that's uh, the IV, the at-the-money IV, as a function of time, because that changes too. Luckily, that's easier to, easier to estimate. 
So recall that I tabulated um, at the money IV for these four options that I, that I used, that I cut and pasted from barchart.com. So I plot those uh, at the money IVs here on this plot, and you see a roughly linear dependence. Um, it's actually a pretty significant skew with time. You know, the near expiration at the money IV is around 10%, but it climbs to 15%, but by the time we get to 60 days expiration. So um, in this case, the slope and intercept of this best fit line are 7.48 times 10 to the minus fourth and 0.101 um, respectively. Okay, so if I, if I return to the sticky delta equation, then I substitute the expression for at the money IV into the sticky delta equation, and uh, you, there it is. So now would be a good time to hit the stop button and, and write this down, unless you want to derive it yourself, and it's, it's not hard or anything, but um, it takes time. Okay, so once I have this equation, um, I'm, and I've, I've got the, the parameters. In this case, I've got uh, four parameters, M, ATM, B, ATM, A, and B. And these are the, the four kind of best fit parameters that I have to tabulate for each particular day, each particular stock. So once you have all those, um, you can then create a matrix of implied volatility as a function of uh, uh, time and uh, uh, stock price and strike price. So here's a matrix of the, of the IVs for a situation where the stock price declines from uh, 445.50 to $435 over the period of 105 days. Let me just assume linearly. Um, so with, with Derman, he's, if, if at the money IV didn't change with time, um, if there was no skew, then if you follow that kind of line, the at the money line, then basically this, the stock price line from 445.50 down to 435, um, the IV it would be constant along that line. But there is significant at the money skew, uh, skew in the at the money IV. So uh, it actually, the IV decreases considerably. Um, and, and it makes sense. I mean, option holders, they have to pay more for long, longer dated options because there's a larger chance that the price is going to make a big move sometime during the 105 days versus with two days to expiration. So IV is, is, is kind of that fudge factor that connects market option prices, which are driven by supply and demand, um, back to the Black-Scholes equation. So that's that's why I, IV varies and, and, and why it's kind of a big deal. Uh, so why, why am I doing this? What's the point? Um, so if you want to have an accurate uh, ability to model uh, option prices, um, as time evolves, as the stock price changes, as volatility changes, you need to have some kind of an underlying model uh, to evolve IV. It's, it's a big deal. Um, how much of a big deal? Uh, Vega. Vega tells you how much of a big deal it is. Uh, Vega tells you what's the change in the option price for a uh, 1% change in, in the volatility. Um, so here the at the money volatility is changing from 0.18 down to 0.1. Uh, that's, a, that's a big change. Um, so the bigger Vega is, the more sensitive the option price is going to be. So it's uh, getting the IV correct, or at least having uh, trying to be correct or, or more realistic about it is important if you want to understand how to how to stock option prices evolve in, in real life. So that's what I'm trying to do. Am I there yet? Who knows? But I'm trying. I uh, would love to hear your feedback in the comments and um, if you've got a different way of modeling IV or if I've made a mistake or got questions, uh, let me know. But uh, we'll see you next time.